This is Greg Troutline with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're pleased to be joined today by Phil Lewis, Director of Research for World Energy Reports, an expert in the offshore energy markets and the author of Outlook for Offshore Wind Power, The Frontier of Future Energy. Phil, again, a pleasure to welcome you to Maritime Reporter TV. Hi, Greg, and thanks for the welcome. It's good to be back. Absolutely. Well, Phil, as you have a true global view on the pace and direction of the offshore wind market, why don't we start off with a short history 101, if you will, a lesson to discuss how this market has evolved since the early 90s with insights on what you've seen most recently. Thanks, Greg. Uh, World Energy Reports were excited about the development of offshore wind from a fringe technology to a cost competitive option for grid and off-grid energy solutions. Uh, most people are unaware that offshore wind turbines were first installed some 30 years ago, and that activity in the first two decades was dominated by the Northern European countries. Because of the activity, supply chains were first developed in this region. The last decade saw the industrialization of offshore uh, wind and the entry of China, and to a lesser extent, Taiwan as significant market players. And the first half of this decade is seeing a surge in offshore wind capacity as wind becomes more global with new players like the US and Japan adding capacity to the system. A good example of a developing offshore wind market is the UK, where we hear Prime Minister Boris Johnson setting a target of 40,000 megawatts of installed wind capacity by 2030. At World Energy Reports, we expect the UK to move from around 11,000 megawatts of installed capacity at the end of 2020, that's the single largest market in the world, to close to 24,500 megawatts only by 2025, so quickly. The surging capacity additions will be underpinned by several gigawatt scale mega projects. It is not too unrealistic to talk about a green industrial revolution in core offshore wind markets like the UK. We have seen the establishment of local manufacturing and more importantly, operations and maintenance support infrastructure witnessed by port developments and redevelopments, onshore monitoring and control bases and offshore inspection, repair and maintenance activity. This positive economic uh, development will be seen again and again in all emerging offshore wind markets and will offer many positive benefits for local economies. With the wider ex, uh, global acceptance of offshore wind at World Energy Reports, we see some interesting trends developing. Firstly, offshore wind is playing a larger role in grid supply in key markets. Secondly, offshore wind is seen as a solution for a range of off-grid solutions, such as decarbonization of power supply to oil and gas operations and hydrogen production. Thirdly, is the dawn of commercial scale floating wind farms that access better quality wind resources and provide some very exciting supply chain opportunities. Phil, as you know, in the offshore wind market, size does matter. The turbines are getting larger, the projects are getting larger. What do you see as the implications for the market development as a whole? Well, you've touched on an interesting area there, Greg. Uh, we've mentioned that offshore wind is becoming more mainstream. And as it does, the average project size is increasing, which is a key driver for overall cost reduction. Only five or six years ago, the average wind farm size was around 100 megawatts. At World Energy Reports, we forecast the average to be around 600 megawatts by 2025. And this will include multi gigawatt developments like the UK's Dogger Bank, which will reach 3,600 megawatts of capacity when its three phases are installed by 2025. Large capacity is more easily achieved with larger turbines. As examples, Dogger Bank will use G's new Haliad X 13 megawatt turbine platform. We also expect to see these units on the Skipjack and Ocean Wind projects in the US and possibly Asabranca 1 in Brazil. We see Siemens Gamasa 14 megawatt units planned for Sofia in the UK and Coastal Virginia in the US. And this supplements the Siemens Gamasa 11 megawatt platform to, which we'll see installed on Hollandus, uh, Holland's Sucus South and North from 2021, followed by Godi Wind 3 and 4 and Borkum Rifgren 3 in Germany. At least 27 projects will use the MHA, MHI Vestas 9.5 megawatt platform and the 10 megawatt variant from 2020 to 2026. The recently announced takeover by Vestas of MHI's 50% in their MHI Vestas offshore wind turbine joint venture 
is likely to result in investors rolling out a new very large offshore wind turbine platform. MHI stays involved with investors uh, with a 2.5% equity stake investors and a seat on the board. And outside the big three Western Turbine OEM, the leading Chinese OEMs are testing even larger wind turbine models. With Dongfang due to install a prototype of its 10 megawatt model and Mingyang planning uh, to make its 11 megawatt platform commercially available in 2022. It's also worth noting that Mingyang has announced plans to develop a 10 megawatt typhoon resistant floating wind turbine as it keeps its eyes on the growing potential for the East Asian floating wind market. A World Energy reports, we're closely monitoring the opportunities and challenges for the, the larger turbines. Broadly speaking, the installation fleet has an ongoing challenge to provide tonnage that meets the requirements of heavier lifts, to higher heights, while meeting their investor return requirements. As projects get bigger and use bigger turbines, smaller projects will still need to source smaller turbines, which leaves rooms for the existing unmodified installation fleet. And finally, OEMs don't necessarily want to supply small demonstration projects. They're looking for the volume, i.e. small projects like floating wind, uh, pilots and demonstrations. Now, this potentially opens the door for players outside of the leading OEM to build market scale. Okay. Phil, as always, excellent insights. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Greg. Much appreciated.